I believe God is getting us ready. We, we already see the writing on the wall. All the evidence is all over the place. In the weather, in the times, in what the government is doing, in the, 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 the drama that's going on around the world, the sicknesses, the, the, the food shortage, everything is, is, is culminating. It's all coming to a head. And we can see it. We're getting ready to enter in. We are in the beginning of sorrows now. So now we've got people battling the government, letting them know it's not right to take away our right to choose whether we want to have vaccine or not be vaccinated. It is not right to censor the YouTube channels, the Facebook channels, the the, the the social media it's not right that that's more fascist that that it, there's something wrong with that you're taking away our rights you're it's against the constitution what is going on and people are starting to rise up now so we're not only going to have what's going on we're also going to have times of unrest it's going to be a lot of commotion going on now during that time, though, you have to keep your mind on Jesus or else you will react like these men reacted in Mark chapter 4. I'm going to read the story to you. Verses 37 through 40. And there arose a great wind, and the waves beat in the ship so that it was now full. And he, Jesus, was in the hinder part or the hinder part, the, the back end of the ship, asleep on a pillow. In other words, he was asleep and comfy. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And I say to those of you who are looking at all this commotion going on, peace be still. And he said unto them, why are ye so fearful? Is it, how is it that ye have no faith? Going into this season we're going into, there are things that have to take place after a while. You know what they are. They have to take place. And people are going to fight them for a minute. But there's going to come a point where you know who is going to be revealed. Things are going to start shaking and baking. Commotion is going to start going all over the place. Things are going to start bouncing off the walls. God's people cannot afford to be afraid. One of the deadliest things that come from fear, one of the deadliest things that comes from fear is panic. Panic kills. And when you are reactionary and you're panic stricken and you're running over here, putting out this fire and running over there, putting out that fire instead of standing back, letting God deal with the fire or fires, you end up making rash decisions, hasty moves. You move too fast, things get broken. People can get hurt. People can get killed. You got to slow. You got to slow your pace. You got to get into your mind and think. Keep your mind stayed on God. What does it say? The Bible says he will keep you in perfect peace. Perfect peace. Not partial peace. Not part-time peace. Not I'm in it today. I'm out of it tomorrow. I'm on it now. I'm off tomorrow. No. Perfect peace. If you keep your mind stayed on him. That's why Jesus was able to sleep. 
nice and comfy on his pillow because his mind was stayed on his father. Not on the circumstances he was sleeping in. God's people focus on God. Focus on glory. Focus on your Savior. Focus on his authority. Focus on his strength. Focus on his power. Focus on him. There's a song that says, focus on glory. You can't make it on your own. Focus on glory. And keep singing Jesus songs. Oh, what joy to know that in Him we're on top of the world. Now, just like the plane I talked about last year, when the wind starts whipping and the storm starts brewing and the clouds come in and the lightning is clapping, the thunder is rolling and it's feeling real scary because the plane is jumping and dipping and wiggling and wobbling and it feels like it's going to fall out the sky. Now, just like Jesus told the men in the boat, peace be still, he's telling you in that plane, your proverbial plane, peace be still. But he's also telling you how to maintain that peace. Climb and maintain. Climb and maintain. What are you doing? He's rising you above the storm. So you climb. And you keep that altitude. God knows how to circumvent the hard, the hard things going on. The things that are coming our way. The food shortages. The violence. Mm -hmm. The earthquakes. The natural disasters. Stuff we don't even know is coming down the pipe. These pestilences, diseases, deaths, all this stuff going down, baby. Do you have your raincoat on? Mm -hmm. Are you dressed for the journey? Because this is going to be a rough ride. You're either going to be fighting waves and wind and storm, or you're going to be fighting turbulences up above. Either way, you're going to be fighting something. But you got to go through it to get above it. You got to go through it to get on the other side of it. Now, God may circumvent you so you don't even have to go through that mess. But while you're going around it, you're going to be watching it. And you're going to watch what other people are going through while you're escaping it. While you're circumventing it. While you're avoiding it. God knows the way of escape. He always makes a way of escape, a way where there is no way. But you can not afford to panic. Okay. Let's go to Psalms 35. Some of you, God is showing me, you're not going so much through panic because of what's going on out there, because of what you're seeing in the media, because of what you're hearing on the radio, on YouTube, through hearsay, through the grapevine. I heard it through the grapevine. Yeah, you heard it, baby, but you don't have to focus on it. Where's your focus? Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Some of y'all got this going on in your house. Some of y'all got this going on on your job. Some of you got this going on in your little social gatherings or at your churches. You got this going on somewhere. 
God wants you to know he knows the turbulence you're living in right now. Mm-hmm. And this is a real good prayer to pray. And this is why God leads us to these kind of scriptures to let us know when the scripture echoes what we're crying in our heart. He's letting us know. I know what you're going through, baby. I'm with you in it right now. You're not alone in this. I am with you. I got you. Plead my cause. This is Psalms 35 in case you didn't hear me. Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for my help. Draw out also the spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. Let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that divides my hurt. Let them be as chaff before the wind and let the angel of the Lord chase them. Let their way be dark and slippery and let the angel of the Lord persecute them. For without cause have they hid for me their net in a pit, which without cause they have digged for my soul. I mean, you know, David is, is hurting right now. It's like, handle them, Lord. They're too big for me. Fight my battle for me here. I can't take any more. Some of you are saying that to the Lord. I can't take much more of this. How long does this have to go on? I feel like I'm being tortured. I'll continue reading it. Mm. Let destruction come upon him at unawares. Let him, let his net that he hath hid catch himself into that which destruction. Let him fall into that very destruction. Let him fall. And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. Not joyful because they're getting their booty kicked. Be joyful in the Lord. Watch that. Be careful not to be happy at someone else's calamity. That's a no-no with God. It shall rejoice in his salvation. All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like unto thee, who delivers the poor from him that is too strong for him. Yea, the poor and the needy from him that spoileth him. False witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. They rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting, and my prayer returned unto mine own bosom. I behaved myself as though he had been my friend or brother. I bowed down heavily as one that mourneth for his mother. Listen, see, there are going to be times in life. I'm going to tell you this right now, because I've been there. I've done that. I bought the T-shirt, and God handled it. There are going to be times you're going to find people don't like you. They don't like the way you look. They don't like the way you talk. They don't like your personality. I had a thing, uh, it was last night, somebody wrote me a little something about being a shriveled up old woman. What did I know? It didn't hurt my feelings. I don't know who the person is, so it didn't really matter. All I got to do is hit delete. <laughs> it's just that simple. But you will find in your life, there will be people that will purposefully, meaningly, he hurt your feelings. They want to hurt you. They want to make you squirm. Why? You think you're cute. No, the real thing is they think you're cute and they hate that. Matter of fact, they think you're cuter than they are. And they're jealous of it. They think you have a better personality. They think you're smarter. They think you're richer. They think you're whatever. But whatever it is that you have that they feel like they don't or they got cheated out of, why them, why not me? Yeah, that's their jealousy. That plays into that. And you will find that people will be attitude and left and right on you. 
And you wonder, what did I do? What's wrong with me? What, do I have a sign on my forehead? What did I say? Don't trip it. Don't pan it. Focus on glory. Focus on the one that you know loves you and has your back, baby. The one that you know is for you 1,000%. Don't focus on the naysayers. Don't focus on those that have nothing but criticism towards you. Don't focus on folks that make you feel like you're something that crawled out from under a rock and, babe, you need to crawl right back because nobody wants to deal with the likes of you. Don't worry about folks like that. Get up off of that. The Bible says not to worry, not to put store into what people think. Focus on things above, not on things below. Hmm. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. Make sure God is your treasure. Don't focus on the naysayers or else that will be where your treasure is. That will be what you put great importance on. People who don't think anything about you. People who put you down. People who criticize you. People who return your sweetness for, for, for nastiness. People who return your kindness with spite with little digs and little sm snide remarks. No, 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 you don't deal with that. You stay as far away from them as the East is from the West. Nobody told you you had to keep going back and getting abused. I never saw that in the Bible. All right. Now, here we go. The thing I, I just want to share, I'm not going to be long on this one. The thing I want to share, number one, God loves you. Number two, God is for you. Number three, he did not create you out of yarn, which means you were not created to be a doormat, a rug to be walked on. You were not to be under someone else's feet. What did the Bible say you were? The Bible said, you are the head, not the tail, baby. See, the demons want you to think that you're the tail. It's like in that little dramatization when I did the demon of scorn. And I said, I'll be the head and you'll be the tail. Yeah, well, guess what? That's wrong, baby. That's a lie from the pit. God called us to be the head, not the tail. Don't let anybody treat you that way. You are not called to be abused. You are not called to be dismissed as if you're a piece of trash, tossed in the garbage, taught, flushed down the toilet. No, that's not what God called you to be. But there are people that will treat you that way. That's part of life. That comes with the package deal of living on this planet. But this too shall pass. Remember that. God is in control. He's the one that says when act one, act two, act three, act four is over. And he's the one that lets you know when your warfare is accomplished. And when he tells you your warfare is accomplished, you're going to find either the people are going to disappear or the problem is just going to go up in smoke. And you won't have to deal with that anymore, not from them. Satan always has somebody on the, on the wings backstage waiting to, to take somebody's place, some understudy. But he still got to get permission from God. And sometimes God says, you're done. No more of that mess. Leave my servant alone. And guess what Satan has to do? Yes, boss, obey. Because he's the flunky. That's why God's the one in charge. Satan's the flunky. He wants you to think he's in charge, but he's not, baby. He's the flunky. Trust me. You try rebuking him in the name of Jesus, watch how fast he disappears. Yeah! Gone up in smoke. Mm -mm. No. God is the one in charge. And that's what you have to remember. You have to keep your mind stayed 
on God. When this flares up and that flares up and this fire ignites and that spark starts burning. No, don't you sit up there and start running around grabbing bales, uh, pails of, of water. You sit back and say, Lord, please handle this for me. Give me, help me maintain your peace. Help me not panic. Jesus didn't tell the disciples to calm the storm, did he? When they called on him, who calmed that storm? Jesus calmed the storm. So when you're in something that's too big for you, baby, who do you call on? Because he's the one with the power. He can tell the wind where to go. Mm -hmm. He can tell the rain. Oh, no. That's right. He can tell the sun whether he wants it to shine or whether he wants it to go. He can do whatever he wants with his creation. All you have to do is call on him. Put your hand in the hand of the man who steals the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man who calms the sea. Remember that. He's the one in control, not you. You go to the one. You don't try to do it your way. You don't try to get somebody told. You don't show them how big and bad you are because you're not big and bad. You might be bad, but you're not big and bad like you think you are. Back up. And let God upstage you. Don't you upstage God. All right. <clears throat> Lord, what else? <laughs> Woo! Okay. This is what you got to think. You got to know how God's going to handle your enemies. We're going to Isaiah 31. This won't be long. I'm going to close with this. I'm about done. All right. Now, now for those of you who are still consulting with stuff you ought not be consulting with, and for those of you who are still intimidated by your enemies after all that was said, check this out. Isaiah chapter 31. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots, because they are many. And trust in horsemen because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. Yet he also is wise and will bring evil and will not call back his words, but will arise against the house of the evildoers and against the help of them that work iniquity. Now the Egyptians are men and not God and their horses flesh and not spirit. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth shall fall and he that is hoping or helped shall fall down and they all shall fall together. For thus saith the Lord, for thus hath the Lord spoken unto me, like as the lion and the young lion roaring in his prey. When a multitude of shepherds is called forth against him. He will not be afraid of their voice, nor abase himself for the noise of them. So shall the Lord of hosts come down to fight for Mount Zion. See, says it right there. He will come down to fight for Mount Zion and for the hill thereof. As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending also, he will deliver and passing over, he will Preserve, turn ye unto him from whom the children of Israel have deeply revolted. For in that day every man shall cast away his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which your own hands have made unto you for a sin. Then shall the Assyrians fall with the sword, not of a mighty man, and the sword not of a mean man, shall devour him, but he shall flee from the sword, and his young men shall be discomforted, and he shall pass over to his stronghold for fear, and his princes shall be afraid of the ensign, saith the Lord, whose fire is in Zion, and his furnace in Jerusalem. Oh, he's letting them know, baby, 
<laughs> the buck stops here, baby. I'm, I burn your behinds. I got this. I will defend my mountain. I will defend my people. I will keep my babies. So you, you babies of God, don't have anything to fear. I don't care what they hold back from you. I don't care what they don't help you with. I don't care what they try to snatch away from you. Yeah, there'll be some times when we'll get very little help, but God is still with us because some things must go on to fulfill prophecy. And if it must be fulfilled, God will find a way where there is no way for his babies. But are you calling on him? Who are you calling on? Some of you are spending more time writing letters to the government trying to make changes than you are trying to call on God to just reach down and do his stuff, to do his thing. This is God's creation. Psalms 24 says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and all they that dwell therein. Yeah, above in or below, don't matter, it's all God's. Remember that, and God is in control. Now, can you sit back, cross your legs and say, okay, Lord, you take the wheel from now on. I'm going to sleep on my soft pillow, and I'm even going to snore while I'm at it. Do you trust him enough to do that while you're going through the turbulence, while you're going through the waves, while you're going through the storm? Do you trust him? I hope so. Be encouraged. God bless you.